everyone is reacting to the black magic pixies dropping today we're not going to react we're going to be very logical about this now that nab's come and we've gotten a much more real life feel of this camera there are a couple of things that has changed from the last video the first thing that i've learned is that it is pronounced as pixis like pixar not pikes like the way i called it also the body is legit it is not plastic it, it feels more like aluminum and magnesium type of fill it is also lightweight something about two and a half pounds ish it's a bit bigger than the komodo more like an fx6 style of body and you cannot really hold the camera on the side because of the breadth of the camera which in a way sort of creates an opportunity for manufacturers of like different cages to be able to come up with solutions for creators and one downside as well <laughs> is that for those people who like to have side handles you might not necessarily be able to have two side handles yet people who have seen and tested this camera out in person um kofi's been there patrick has been there shout out to my homies true story sal and bart they're there the viewing angle on the screen sort of changes once you move across the plane but the good thing as well is that the buttons on the side they're not clicky clicky they're very soft touch and it's been confirmed the lens mount is not changeable so if you do go with the pl or whatever mount that you go with that is the one that you are going to be locked into so be sure to choose something that works for you i think the camera was intended to be used with an ac or whatever but given the price point right if the monitor flips out it would definitely be more appealing to a much broader audience but the reality is what production do you really know that is running acs and crew for a 3000 camera body that only shoots b-raw has one xlr no internal nd and one sdi port and there are other questions that are still really valued long term for example how do you control the camera it really looks like this thing is basically designed to only be used straight out of the box with the evf which can be problematic you see for a first ac it is understandable if a monitor is on the right side so that the ac can control the settings and do everything with the buttons which is why it is on that side the problem with this camera is that the pikes has the buttons on the left side which is kind of weird. It's almost attempting to do like the cinema style configurations, but in a reverse manner. And I think that's just because Blackmagic is thinking that you will probably use this as a one man band run gun type of thing. The only way to really make this thing run and gun is if you used it with the EVF, which costs extra like the venice and the alexas but with those cameras you can only run them with two people in the crew or more and the pixis is not really designed for that type of production so the, the big question now arises who's this camera really for another problem again that you should consider is that black magic going the route of not using regular codecs it's also an issue in a way if you plan to hand off what you shot to a production house or another editor or something like that and i should also say that if you can afford to do that then this is probably not the camera for you but if you do plan to do that and it just happens that that post house doesn't use resolve this camera instantly becomes a brick a lot of clients and post-production houses as well will argue that the black magic raw is not worth changing all of their editing suits for instead of ProRes or H.264, which is what they primarily use a lot in those types of workflow but i found is that especially people who use old industry standard editing tools trying to talk them into changing to something else is sort of very difficult don't don't get it twisted b-raw in this camera is a great option to work with but you still have to shoot raw which is still just too much for a lot of production houses and most places the truth is most clients just don't want raw i think it's just 264 is probably the only codec that i saw that was listed with the pikes but without standard codecs this camera just will not sell well at least from a commercial point putting that big screen on it just seems like a missed opportunity right it's on the wrong side for a first ac and it's not viable to use when operating for a single user one might even argue that they finally got it right 
on the Ursar. Why not this camera? At $3,000, it's priced for the casual filmmaker who probably doesn't own a field monitor with an SDI or the ability to buy an EVF to solve a problem that shouldn't be because at that price range, people most likely are using HDMI monitors. With all those problems, I still don't agree that this camera is not good enough. All of these arguments are valid and I would argue that they're not wrong, but I would also argue that anyone defending this camera as an investment is also not wrong. It seems that Blackmagic literally took the guts out of the 6K Pro and they stuck it in this box to satisfy the fan request, the consumers. This is what they want. And that is good business. I remember when the Z Cam first dropped, that camera was ignored and criticized, especially for that peephole thing that they had as a screen. But now with feedback and everything, they are getting so much love. And it was even used, if I recall correctly, on one of the Mission Impossible movies. Why? Anyone can use any camera, especially when third party companies build accessories for them to fit individual requirements, which is the case here. I think Blackmagic's design philosophy for this camera is for it to be rigged out. So you'll always have less usability right out of the box. If you want a camera that you can just pull out of a backpack or, or a case and start shooting right away, they already sell the 6K Pocket Pro. I actually see the two cameras working together as a great combo. And I remember that this is something Kofi mentioned in his interview with the guys at Blackmagic at NAB. You use one, which is rigged out, in this case, the Pikes is, and the pocket for like quick run and gun stuff that you can keep in a backpack. And if you think about it, it's roughly the same as the way you operate the FX6, but instead of all the buttons on the side, there's a display. Also, if you think about it, <laughs> and it just hit me right now, if you wanna put your FX6 in a case or a bag, you still need to disassemble the monitor. You cannot even change the settings on the monitor with the FX6. I don't think it's a coincidence that Blackmagic has reduced the price of the video assist. So maybe that is a sign that new models are on the way. If so, I'm hoping that these new monitors can act as controllers if paired with the Pikesys. If not, there's also plenty of small lightweight monitors in the market. Once again, emphasis on the price. The price is a steal. So now let's address the screen issue. Regarding how a professional, emphasis on professional, regarding how a professional would like the camera. Side controls and screens have been standard for so long on top level cinema cameras. So I don't really find the side screen to be a problem, mainly because it seems that you can control many of the exposure settings using the buttons of the side of the camera. The only time you would really need to use the side screen is to change settings that typically remain constant throughout your shoots, like resolution, for example, because in reality, once you've set up your shot, you won't be changing your settings halfway through, particularly if you're working with like a cinema lens and, you know, a follow focus. A flip out screen even though it would definitely be an upgrade, but it seems that the box camera form factor was asked for because people wanted an easier time rigging the body, which generally includes a screen. Who's this camera really for? And what is the point here? I think the form factor is best for quick paced work for shoulder mounts used to. That side screen is in a good spot for adjusting things. Similar to the FX6, but a digital interface and less physical buttons. I think that a smaller screen, similar to what you see like on the V Raptor, for example, and the Venice would have been very ideal and you can take the cost saving there and put that into internal NDs. As far as HDMI and the SDI conversation goes, I think it would have been nice to have an HDMI, but as long as you have SDI, I personally see HDMI as a backup option. I view this camera as a competitor to the Komodo, which also has an SDI out. It doesn't have an HDMI as well, but here's the value proposition. Because of the price difference between the two of them, you can properly rig this camera out with a monitor and plenty of batteries and other accessories and still stay under the 6,000 price tag of the Komodo. For me, that's just, that's a win. That is a win. I bet that the next version of this camera that's gonna be released maybe next year will have a brighter flip screen on the side. Box cameras are designed to be built up for whatever specific task necessary. The Pixis is a tool. Either it fits your need or not, but whatever the case is, buy the tools 
that you need. I'm done with black magic. I don't even own a black magic camera and I've been having to make comments so far. Bye.